So I was making a video about last season. I, I just was too negative. I just didn't like it, so I scrapped it. Last season sucked, like really bad. I, I don't want to talk about it. Said, I want to talk about something I do like. I want to talk about interplanetary war as shown in anime. From grand strategy to planetary invasions to how battles work and the weapons used in, in various shows. I'll give my opinions on each aspect as well. So first of all, let's talk about grand strategy. <laughs> When I think of space wars, I imagine Alfred Thayer Mahan's naval strategy just on a grand scale. Decisive battles, fleet and being, and space supremacy. If you don't know the strategy, there's a good video on the subject. I'll put it in the description below. So if your enemy has a strong fleet, the first step is attempting to force what's called a decisive battle. After which, it makes it clear once and for all who has control of access to space. This is why in Die Rugger, the enemies can't really press on with their invasion of the Earth. They, they need to double back to face the Rugger team so they can later exploit their monopoly on base control. That was one of the tactical blunders the Galveston army made. It was a lot of others, but it was made due to impatience to end the war, and pressures from home, and foolhardy search for personal glory. They attacked Earth before taking out the Space Navy. The Federation, on the other hand, despite being close to the Galveston home planet, when they got word of Earth being attacked, they turned back. This is so they can confront them in a decisive battle. And the Federation won because now they were cut off from their supply. This is the same sort of mistake that the Empire and Legend of Galactic Heroes always makes. Vainglorious commanders aren't really conducive to a proper space war. They always seem to find their way in command, don't they? I am the one and only God. If, for example, it was a small distraction force, so it could double back and surround the Rugger team with a hidden main force, things might have been different. The important thing to remember is, in Space War, you absolutely want to focus on disabling your enemy's fleet, first and foremost. You need to win space supremacy. After naval supremacy has been won, Mahan theorizes a navy must push its advantage. A blockade can only do so much in war, uh, especially when what you're blockading is, well, the size of a planet. They could pretty much just last forever down there. So large-scale invasions is going to have to follow. Unless, of course, you're going the genocidal route and dropping a colony or nuking the planet with radiation for habitation. Both of which can only happen after the initial space dominance is won, of course. But let's assume the aliens just want to conquer Earth as it is. Yeah, alien invasion is a staple of old anime, especially Mecha. It's your bread and butter if you put on something from 70s or 80s. My favorite alien invasions include Dankuga, where it's a brutal war for control during various stages of occupation just all across the globe.
But otherwise, I'm always a fan of the aliens just being incredibly strong, to the point where there's really no hope for the heroes, but there's always a reason why the aliens just can't wipe out humanity. In Macross, it was due to fears of the protoculture of the My Clones. In Zanbot 3, well, the villain was just toying with humanity. <laughs> Al Noah Zero was brilliant, but it was over too quickly. But maybe a planet is just a small colony and it's reliant on the shipments from home. An easy way to conquer these would just to blockade the planet. And then you deliver your ultimatum. This is what happens in uh, the Seikai series. That's Banner of the Stars or Crest of the Stars in the English release. The Ab Space Empire has a monopoly on space control. They give complete freedom to the planetary governors on their planets, but they refuse them any spacefaring vessels. All space flights have to be done through the app. Complete hegemony is their way of maintaining peace among the stars. The main conflict later on becomes an alliance of free planets who oppose the app monopoly on space. The battles in the show are very interesting. It's, it's one thing to have flashy lasers and missile spans and giant robots with space swords. And, uh, all that's really cool, but see, Sekai has subspace minefields and warp hole choke points. Seike is being clever here, uh, due to the vastness of space, right? Most other shows just leaves it to an unrealistic impulse flight. Not to say impulse isn't cool, it just means you need things like massive fleets and supply ships for an effective military force out there. That became a continued issue in, in Die Rugger, where the, the supply and reinforcements fleets are always getting shot down by the enemy. It leaves the crew cut off from Earth, so they have to fend for themselves. Good thing they have a super robot made of cars. <laughs> That's another thing. Aerodynamic uh, ship design doesn't really make sense in space. It's much more effective to have something like giant death balls flying around than anything that needs to cut through air. Which is something Yamato Series 2 did with the Comet Empire. This thing is a mobile space fortress. Apparently the idea of this comes from a 1930s classic SF story by Jack Williamson. I've only read Born of the Sun, but I, I, I just adore it. Taking advantage of the 3D space is not often done in anime. Usually they just line up and, and treat the battle space like it's an ocean. Legend of the Galactic Heroes is the worst defender of this. The really, the only thing that matters in that show is numbers and, and getting to that OP semicircle formation, right? If only they knew the power of the semicircle. Kimino Alien <laughs> Now don't get me wrong, I love this show. The battles though are more just like theaters for the characters themselves to interact through. Like a fight in a musical. Rather than any serious attempt at discerning space combat strategies. You have to have a level of suspension of disbelief while watching this show that you don't have to have in Seikai or even Die Rugger. L look, the car robot makes sense, okay? I swear. Legend of Galactic Heroes is more like a romance of space combat. One thing I like seeing in Die Rugger is this formation of attack ships in this cross formation. I always imagined this to be the proper way to fight in 3D space. It's like a Rowan Manipul. Manipul? Manipul? How do you say this? I'm gonna say Manipul. See this way, they're able to change formations easily while keeping in line for a maximum damage output. Die Rugger is just one of my favorite shows about space battles. The whole anime is more like a spectacle of space war than anything else. I recommend it if this is your thing. I often forget there's even a super robot mixed in all of this, but it's never unwelcome when it shows up. The, the robot battles are super cool.
the lasers in this are all just, just one of the best I've seen in anime. It looks so devastating. You know, it's nothing like the Hado cannon or, or the solar ray thing from Gundam, but just for your basic lasers, they are super heavy compared to, like, Riger. But lasers, man, lasers are so cool. It doesn't matter what I'm watching, when I see just death rays, it, it gets me excited. So I'm talking about lasers, though, I have to mention Starship Operators. The lasers in the show work probably exactly how they should. The SF is really thought through. Instead of just exploding on impact, it actually heats up the outer hole until it bakes everything inside and, and catches something that explodes. You know, never mind the whole explosions in space, just forget about that for now. I like how instead of just Star Trek energy shields that get damaged, what, what they call it is a heat shield as in it actually protects the ship from temperature, meaning it's built just to resist laser fire, or solar rays, maybe. Enough contact with the super hot laser will drain it, and that's a really nice touch. As for lasers though, you really can't beat Zillion. One simple shot and it just vaporizes anything. It's really good if you just like scrappy action scenes. But if we're talking about hand lasers, nothing is more devastating than the Cosmo Dragoon. The cool thing about Gundam's beam rifle is that the power of the shot is meant for space battleships to fire. That's why it just melts through any Zaku. A mobile suit being able to wield something like this was an incredible feat to the Xeon. If it's such a powerful piece of hardware, of course you couldn't go portable with that amount of energy easily. Having limited shots adds to the sci-fi as well as adding tension to the battle scenes. They later solved this problem with refill cartridges, showing you how the compressed Minovsky high-energy capacitor technology develops during the war, because Dr. Minovsky, the father of Minovsky physics, defected from Xeon, and it's little things like this that makes the One Year War one of the most iconic and romanticized war in all of the otaku fandom. Tomino is really good at this kind of internal consistency and containing the power scaling of his robots. Edeon was only able to do the things it did because it was a source of infinite energy. The Zabungal and Gallier were as strong as they were just because they were the only mecha built specifically for combat. Every other mecha in Zabungal was, was just mining or construction equipment. So I like that kind of grounded reasoning in my giant death machines. But nothing gets quite to the level of minutia as the One Year War gets. <laughs> Tomino's masterful storyboarding only helps to solidify this verisimilitude, as well as helping you understand the action step by step, making it engaging and fun. It's the best example of a space war I know of for this. It even has a lot of points I've covered in this video. It has an alien invasion that's overwhelmingly powerful due to the mobile suits, which they only do after defeating the planet's space fleet in a decisive battle. You get to see how technology progresses through the war. One of the most important parts of Gundam is that these giant impractical robots are all just military equipment in the end. They're built for a purpose, to counter the enemy's equipment. That's why over the course of the show you see Zaku destroying tanks, the Fetty suits destroying the Zaku. Then the Fetty suits are countered with the Goof and the Dom, which takes its toll on the crew of the White Base. And these are countered with the GMs being mass-produced. Then the Xeon went out to mass-produce Big Zams, and then towards the end, both sides are looking into developing giant solar deathways at each other, and exploiting new types, right? But I could go on and on about the escalation of this war, so I, I better leave it there for now. As for space war in general, though, I like for there to be realistic strategies, internal consistencies, a real use for the 3D space. I want the sci-fi to make sense and play a role. But somehow, <laughs> at the same time, if we're talking about anime, I just want to forget all this verisimilitude nonsense. Realism is not really something I look for in an anime, but when something's sci-fi, I measure it with a separate stick. And so the same show might have two separate ratings for me. A good anime doesn't always make a good sci-fi, and a good sci-fi isn't always a good anime. There's something to be said for the distinction you want to make between the medium and the genre when evaluating something. But there are ways to bridge that gap. Talking about giant robots, mecha, there's a real romance to these things. It goes far beyond the scope of this video. I think a part of the history of mecha comes down to how the creators try and capture or represent 
the scope of this romance for their robots, and how they break through layers of realism to achieve a level of verisimilitude they are comfortable with. If you're interested in the history and scope of such things, well, please wait warmly for my future videos. Anyway, that's all I have for you right now. Thanks for watching. I had to learn a new operating system and, and editing programs for this. Let me know how you like your Space Wars. Until next time, take it easy.